observations with Robert Meyer Burnett. You know, I was thinking about the fact that uh, one of the things that I will cop to, and I think a lot of fans will cop to, being fans and being inundated, reading all we can, learning all we can, scouring the internet for all the information we can know, we're like V'ger, learn all that is learnable and bring it back, about movie making, about everything, whether it's video game making, movie making, writing, you know who knows more about it than anybody in the world? We do. We fans, or at least... We think we do. We think that we're all legends in our own minds. I mean, I know I certainly walk around thinking I'm the shit, which is why I'm spouting off on YouTube to you. No, I'm just saying that. I hope you're not taking that at face value because I don't really mean that. Because for me, it's true. It's been a lifelong avocation, and um, I know that there's a lot I don't know. And I look upon every day as a chance to learn more. And to take, uh, even though I've worked in the entertainment business for 32 years, there's still more to learn every single day. I once heard the philosophy spouted to me that um, you should never truly believe that you know something. That if you know something, like 100%, like, oh, I have that cold. Because if you think that's the case, then you stop thinking about it. And you leave yourself um, closed off from learning more about that thing you think you know more of. And as I have learned, we're always getting more information. The world is always expanding. And um, there's always more things to learn about the things even that you think you know everything there is to know about. There's always more to learn. Now, uh, I have been corrected on this show by people. Uh, I have been... um, uh, which, by the way, I always welcome if somebody says something to me that is wrong or that, that if they say that I've said something that's wrong, I'm very open to hearing that. I think it's very important. I mean, I this is an op-ed show. I can offer you my opinion. I can tell you what I think, but that's all it is. It's an op-ed show. I am not, I'm not some guru. I am not some person that knows everything. And, um, you know, I think that's that's important to know. But I'll tell you one thing. There are a lot of people in the fan community, and I'm sure you all know some of them, who believe they know everything. And sometimes it's embarrassing when you see people coming out and trying to school people in the entertainment business about what they think they know or what they don't know. And uh, Bleeding Cool brought to us this week something I, I, I'm just sharing because I thought it was amusing. I don't mean to be, I don't mean to rub salt into a wound, but. As an example, it doesn't get much better than this. So this week, gun-splaining Marvel movie direction to James Gunn. This was published yesterday by Rich Johnson. It was on Bleeding Cool. There has been some discussion online about Marvel Studios' control over their films, setting them up for years ahead of a director being hired. James Gunn, director of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies for Marvel Studios, as well as the upcoming Suicide Squad movie for Warner Brothers, gave his own take. Most of the directors control what the previs is. It's another tool like storyboarding. All previs for the Guardians movies is based on my storyboards. Well, says the author of this article, I didn't know what previs was, so I checked. Pre-visualizations, apparently. The visualizing of complex scenes in a movie before filming. You probably all knew that. But John Schlozer, or Schlauser, who states that he's a media manager at ABC Studios in Sydney, that's the Australian broadcast company, not Disney-owned ABC in the U.S., wanted to contradict Gunn over this because he knew even more about how all this worked. He replied to Gunn saying, Marvel hires lower directors who have only done a few films and promises them the ability to make their own future films if they agree to make a Marvel film that they have no control over. In fact, they barely direct, as the familiar crew usually do it like on any TV show. And James Gunn said, (laughs) at first, most of the directors control what previs is. It's another tool like storyboarding. All previs for the Guardians movies is based on my storyboards. And John Schlozer said... Marvel hires lower directors who have only done a few films and promises them the ability to make their own future films if they agree to make a Marvel film that they have no control over. 
In fact, they barely direct, as the familiar crew usually do it like on any TV show. And somebody wrote to him, uh, Spew says, you're literally telling this to James Gunn. And then James Gunn replied, graciously, (laughs) thanks for the inside information on the job that I have and that you do not. Twitter is quite a thing sometimes. And then John Schlozer doubled doubled down and said, I wonder why he stayed quiet this entire time. Some people have no idea how the film industry works. And James Gunn answers, for instance, as you can see, he sent his finger up pointing above at that tweet. Uh, I found this to be delightful, this exchange, because... Unfortunately, as we all know, many of us think that we know a lot more about how the motion picture business works than we do. And I understand that uh, when you're constantly reading. I mean, there's so much information uh, beginning, I have to say, beginning in the wake of Star Wars uh, with a lot of these large budget tentpole movies. I mean, I have I have a shelf full of Cinefix magazines all the way back to issue one. Now, uh, let's see. Have I shown it before? I'll show it again. Um this is my copy of Cinefix One that I bought off the rack in 1980 when it came out. It might have come out in 79, but I think it was 1980. Here is my first issue. It only had two articles in it. One on the making of Star Trek The Motion Picture. The other on the making of Alien. Now, now I have to say, in the wake of Star Wars, I think it turned a lot of us imagination connoisseurs into voracious readers of making of books, perusing making of documentaries, learning how the process works. And over the course of my youth, in addition to reading magazines like American Cinematographer or all of the Cinefix magazines that came out, uh, and then, of course, making my own films in Super 8 and making little super uh, special effects movies like from Cinemagic magazine that Starlog published, I would say that I learned a great deal about movie making. But I will tell you, as much as I could explain every way uh, a special effect was done in the 80s or 90s, it was very different. For instance, I knew what IntroVision was. IntroVision was an in-camera compositing um, process that they started using on Outland, the movie Outland in 1981, Peter Heim's Outland. Now, IntroVision was a, I think it was, it was Tom Nod. Uh, IntroVision was a company that was billed itself as a one-stop shop. And uh, another IntroVision shot you might recognize is the train in Stand By Me that's bearing down on our four heroes. That was an IntroVision shot. It was used a lot. It was used not very effectively in Hal Needham's Megaforce. But anyway, so uh, I was able, when I was working on Army of Darkness, the Sam Raimi third Evil Dead movie, I was able to go to IntroVision and watch watch scenes being shot. And I have to tell you, as much as I had read about IntroVision over the years, and I could probably tell you everything you needed to know about IntroVision, knowing it was not like being on set. Um, I learned myself, wow, there's just a lot more. I Like, I understood the process, but it was nothing like being at IntroVision on the stages watch, ar- watching Army of Darkness getting filmed. It was a real thrill for me, but... Um, it's not the same. <laughs> Just like when you're in college, reading about things and learning about them in a theoretical capacity is never the same as being on a real set. Uh, there's the old adage that no battle plan ever survives contact with the enemy because you can plan things meticulously, but as soon as you run into uh, that mischievous, well, enemy force, Nothing ever goes exactly as planned. You have to learn how to move and react. But it's just very funny that somebody would tell James Gunn how Marvel works. Now, if you know anything about the the comparison that was being made, the difference between, say, television and movies is actually a very apt comparison because the role of a director is very different on a TV show than it is on a film because it's almost, in a way, reversed. 
a motion picture, usually, of course, it has to be written first, and then the producer has to put the deals together. But once a director is hired on a motion picture, all of the ideas and concepts, everything is flowing through that director. And the director becomes the focal point of every one of the department heads on the film. So, for instance, the costume designers, the makeup people, the effects people, the cinematographer, his entire team, the first AD, the first assistant director, everybody is going to the director and and bringing that, bringing that director ideas and things, and the director is the final arbiter of what's going on. The director is picking these things. Now, that is not to say that the director is not working in collaboration with, with everyone because they are. It's not like the director is going and cutting fabric and dyeing fabric and 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 making sure that costumes fit. No, but the director is consulting with the costume department. And great directors are gr- the same people they know not only to get out of the way of their people, that's part of collaborating, but they also know how to effectively communicate their ideas because everybody is assuming that the director has a vision in their heads of what all of this is supposed to look like. Now, you might be getting questions as a director all day long from 20 different department heads. Well, as a a, a good director, you know how to answer those questions. And as I've said on this show before, if you're an effective director, if you don't know the answer, come up with something. Don't say you don't know. Say something to the effect of, listen, let let me just think for a moment and get right back to you. Uh, so I can focus on this because they'll, people understand you've got a million things in your mind and you might not be focusing on the exact thing that they want to know. Um, uh, so uh, you, you just never tell anybody you don't know. <laughs> just don't do that. Um, come up with some other excuse, but don't make an excuse. You got to be sincere about it. So anyway, what the point is, is everything is being filtered through the director on a television program. A television program is a finely oiled machine. So if you're working on, say, a CBS procedural, you're working on sets that already exist, everything is already set up, you're working with a crew that is used to doing 10 episodes, 15 episodes, 20 episodes, it used to be like on Star Trek, 26 episodes, and the, the thing that isn't the same every day is the director. Directors come in and they're working with the, the crew stays the same, but the director is always different. So what a director tries to come in and do, because one director can't unless, well, now it's different because directors can direct an entire series. But but directors come in and they try and put a flourish on it or an imprintur on it. But what they do is they, if someone says directing television, someone once said it's like being a traffic cop. It's not quite like being a traffic cop. But you're not going to be sitting there reinventing the way a TV series is shot with the cinematographer. The cinematographer already knows how these standing sets are shot. But what you can do, you can you can work with the cinematographer to pick interesting angles, and you can work with your actors to try and bring something unique to how the characters come across and how the writing is interpreted. And there there is there is room to move, but you are not an auteur. Whereas on a movie, you are an auteur. Now, the difference is what this guy was trying to explain to James Gunn, he was gunsplaining to James Gunn, is that, yes, it is true that the Marvel apparatus is similar to a television series in that there is a crew, a very experienced crew from the effects team on down that know how to make these movies. However, what I think Marvel has pioneered the genius, one of the things that Kevin Feige has done is Kevin Feige, while he already knows if something happens, his crew can finish the film, he'll get delivered a movie and it will be competent. But what he wants is to work with people that are going to bring something unique. And that's why he goes after directors specifically. He handpicks people like the Russo brothers, like James Gunn. Do you think that Guardians of the Galaxy was a cookie-cutter film that anybody could have directed? Absolutely not. And let's lest, lest, lest we not forget, James Gunn is all, also a writer-director. He is an auteur working for Marvel. So Marvel is not afraid of that either. They know they have their effects people. They know. Now, what James Gunn is talking about, 
pre-visualization, you utilize a lot of things. You can draw storyboards. You've seen Ridley Grahams, for instance, if you watched behind the scenes on any of Ridley Scott's movie. He, he's an artist. He's a classically trained artist who went to art school, so he can draw. So he'll do what he's, his Ridley Grahams, and then they'll take those, and then the previs department can actually make animatics, which are like basically animations that show you these big scenes. Because on effect scenes, you have to be able to plan them. So the director has to be able to go, okay, while you have companies, pre-visualization companies like the third floor, they're a company in Hollywood that actually bought my movie poster collection. They took over my old office. I love the third floor. But the artists at the third floor will plan whole action sequences. They will actually animate a gigantic fight scene. Now, what will happen is then a director will come in and work and say, listen, let's let's change these angles around. Let's do this. I want this or whatever. But the point is the Marvel movies are very collaborative, but they absolutely have a um, the ability for directors to make their own movies. Certainly when the Russo brothers were tapped to make Winter Soldier, the Russo brothers brought a lot of themselves and what they were interested in, whether they were whatever action movies they talked about, how they were influenced by Michael Mann. And you can certainly see that feel is in those films. They're not these generic movies. I mean, a lot of people think that the Marvel movies are. But Kevin Feige is looking for something unique in that while they have a, a, a team of people that know how to make the films, Kevin Feige wants them to feel different, to have different flavors to them, and that's part of his genius. Now, one of the things that I think is really exciting, so that's why it's silly for James Gunn to be told, no, they don't. it doesn't matter who directs a Marvel movie. That isn't true because you still have your department heads. People are coming and asking what the director wants. What, what would you like to, uh, how are we going to set this shot up? Like, <laughs> you might have previs. You might, you, nowadays, p- people previs entire movies, and you could probably, yes, shoot that if you want, but you still need a director to guide the actors to craft a performance. I mean, the way that Chris Pratt performed Star-Lord or the way that uh, Dave Bautista, Bautista played Drax, all of that was a collaboration with James Gunn. Those characterizations and the acting and all of that was a collaboration. Movie making is a collaboration. And Marvel has just taken that collaboration uh, and they've they've utilized, they've created a system that they needed to create because so much money is at stake. But if you are a great director, there is room to put your personal imprintur on those films. And that's, by the way, what they want. They don't want generic movies. I mean, who would have thought that a Marvel film with a talking raccoon and a talking tree would have worked as well as it would have worked? Well, you know who knew that? Kevin Feige knew that. 